Hi everybody, it's Amber from Sweet Am's Cookies. In this video, I'll show you how I made these red, white, and blue cookies with sprinkles inside. For this cookie project, I used my orange cardamom cookie mix, but you can make your cookie dough from scratch. I'm cutting the dough into three equal pieces. I'm adding a few drops of gel food coloring to the dough. This is Chef Master Super Red. Once you add the color, you can get that mixed in. I'm trying to just fold the dough over and over again instead of really squishing it together because over mixing the dough can make the cookies tough. It's okay if the color isn't completely mixed in. As you can see, I have a few white spots in my dough. And then just set that aside and put some blue food coloring into another piece of the dough and do the same thing, just folding the dough over and over again to get that color mixed in. This color is Chef Master Royal Blue. And you can see on this one, I also have some white spots left in the dough, but it's fine because once these are all marbled together, you're not even gonna notice. And then you'll wrap each piece in plastic and put it in the refrigerator for about an hour, or you can leave it in there for up to three days if you're not ready to use it yet. So now I'm breaking up the dough into little pieces and spreading them out on a piece of parchment paper. I'm trying to arrange it so that there aren't any pieces of the same color that are right next to each other. Depending on the size of your cookie cutter, you might want to do some smaller pieces so that you get more of each color in the shape. Once you have all your dough arranged on the parchment paper, you can cover it with another sheet of parchment paper and then roll it out. I'm rolling mine to just under a quarter inch thick. You can use rolling pin guides for this to make it easier to get the right thickness. And then you can put the dough back into the refrigerator for about 30 minutes to firm up. Once your dough is cold, you can cut the cookies. I'm using my larger bow cutter just to make a guide in the dough. And now I'm going to make a cutout using the smaller bow cookie cutter. I'll put a link to these cutters in the description. When you use this smaller cutter to cut a hole out of the dough, it makes that larger shape spread out a little bit, which is why I like to cut the larger shape after I cut the smaller shape in the middle. And now I'll use my larger cutter again to cut the cookie all the way through. You want to try to keep the dough in the cutter while you transfer it to the baking sheet so that it holds its shape. For these cookies, you'll need two full bows and then two pieces with the center cut out. I'm baking these on a perforated baking mat, which helps the cookies bake evenly and nice and flat. I'll put a link in the description. Those can go into the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes. And while those are baking, you can push the scraps together to make new cookies. You want to make sure that when you re-roll the scraps, you're not squishing them into a big ball because then your colors will blend together and get muddy. So I'm just trying to place these like I did the first time so that I have a nice marbled effect. And then roll those scraps out to just under a quarter inch and put the sheet into the refrigerator to firm up. I'm going to be painting the cookies with airbrush food coloring. This is Chef Master Royal Blue and Super Red. I'm putting a couple of drops of each color into a paint palette. You can also use small dishes for this. And now I'm adding a few drops of vodka. You can use grain alcohol or any flavor extract for this process. Now I'm drawing each section of the bow with an edible ink marker, which is going to help me when I ice the cookies. This is Fluid Consistency Royal Icing and a Decorating Tip 3, and I'm just icing the top two sections first. If you want to learn more about how to make royal icing and different icing consistencies, you can take a look at my online class called Royal Icing 101. The link is in the description. Now I'm using my scribe tool to help shape the icing. While the icing is still wet, I'm using a brush to apply the color. I'm applying the color to follow the shape of the bow loops, and I'm leaving some space in between the red and the blue. Now I'm dragging my scribe tool through the icing, starting in the center and working my way out toward the edge. And since I'm going for a tie-dye effect, I'm doing some smaller strokes in between the longer ones to give it a more realistic tie-dye look. And now I'm icing the tails of the bow. I want each section of the bow to be defined, so that's why I skipped the other set of bow loops for now. Once these have crested over, I'll go back and do that part. I made these for the 4th of July, but you can use any colors you like to make them for any occasion.
I'm applying the color just like I did for the bow loops. Just like before, drag the scribe tool through the icing starting in the center and working my way out toward the edge. Let those crust over for about 15 to 20 minutes before filling in the other bow loops. and let the icing crust over again before piping the center of the bow. And then you'll wanna let that dry for about two hours before piping an outline around each section of the bow. This icing is a little bit thinner than stiff consistency. I'm using a decorating tip one. I always have my scribe tool nearby to help fix any little mistakes in the icing. Now we can assemble the cookies. You'll need one undecorated bottom piece. Put a little bit of icing on the back of the center pieces and attach those to the bottom. I'm using two of these pieces to give myself enough room to have a lot of sprinkles inside. This is the same icing I used to pipe the outline on the bow. And just press those together and make sure that they're all lined up. I'll be filling these cookies with this red, white, and blue sprinkle mix that I got on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. I'm putting a few little spoonfuls of sprinkles inside. And then you can attach the top piece. Once that piece is attached, you can enjoy the cookies right away, or if you want to package them, you can let them dry overnight. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you make these cookies, you can show me your pictures by tagging me on social media at SweetAms. Come join me on Patreon for access to over 40 of my exclusive cookie decorating video tutorials, my cookie and royal icing recipes, and individualized cookie decorating advice. See you there!